Diving into the Wreck by Adrian Rich. First, having read the book of myths and loaded the camera and checked the edge of the knife blade, I put on the body armor of black rubber, the absurd flippers, the grave and awkward mask. I'm having to do this not like Cousteau with his assiduous team aboard the sun-flooded schooner, but here, alone. There is a ladder. The ladder is always there, hanging innocently, close to the side of the schooner. We know what it is for, we who have used it. Otherwise, it is a piece of maritime floss, some sundry equipment. I go down, rung after rung, and still the oxygen immerses me, the blue light, the clear atoms of our human air. I go down, my flippers cripple me. I crawl like an insect down the ladder, and there is no one to tell me when the ocean will begin. First, the air is blue, and then it is bluer, and then green, and then black. I am blacking out, and yet my mask is powerful. It pumps my blood with power. The sea is another story. The sea is not a question of power. I have learned alone to turn my body without force in the deep element. And now it is easy to forget what I came for among so many who have always lived here, swaying their crenellated fans between the reefs and besides, you breathe differently down here. I came to explore the wreck. The words are purposes. The words are maps. I came to see the damage that was done. I came to see the damage that was done. And the treasures, and the treasures that prevail. I stroke the beam of my lamp slowly along the flank of something more permanent than fish or weed, the thing I came for. The wreck and not the story of the wreck, the thing itself and not the myth, the drowned face always staring toward the sun, the evidence of damage worn by salt and away into this threadbare beauty, the ribs of the disaster curving their assertion among the tentative haunters. This is the place, and I am here, the mermaid whose dark hair streams black, the merman in his armored body. We circle silently above the wreck. We dive into the hold. I am she, I am he, whose drowned face sleeps with open eyes, whose breasts still bear the stress, whose silver, copper, vermeil cargo lies obscurely inside barrels, half wedged and left to rot. We are the half-destroyed instruments that once held to a course, the water-eaten log, the fouled compass. We are, I am, you are, by cowardice or courage, the one who find our way back to the scene, carrying a knife, a camera, a book of myths in which our names do not appear. Survival Guide by Joy Layden. No matter how old you are, it helps being young when you're coming to life to be unfinished, a mysterious statement, a journey from star to star. So break out a box of Crayolas and draw your family looking uncomfortably away from the you you've exchanged for the mannequin they named. You should help clean up, but you're so busy being afraid to love or not, you're missing the fun of clothing yourself in the embarrassment of life. Frost your lids with midnight, lid your heart with frost, Rub them all over, the hormones that regulate the production of love from karmic garbage dumps. Turn yourself into the real you, you can only discover by being other. Voila, you're free. Learn to love the awkward silence you are going to be. No goodbyes. For hours at the end, I kissed your temple, stroked your hair, and sniffed it. It smelled so clean. We'd washed it Saturday night when the fever broke, as if there was always the perfect thing to do, to be alive for years. I'd breathe your hair when I came to bed late. It was such pure you. Why I nuzzle your brush every morning, 
because you're in there, just like the dog the night we unpacked the hospital bag, and he skipped and whimpered when Dad put on the red sweater. Cover my bald spot, will you? You'd say and tilt your head like a parrot so I could fix you up always. Always till this one night when I was reduced to, I love you, little friend. Here I am, my sweetest pea. Over and over. Spending all our endearments like stray coins at a border. But wouldn't cry then, no. Choked it because they all said hearing was the last to go. The ear is like a wolf's till the very end, straining to hear a whole forest. And I wanted you, lopping off whatever. You could still dream to the sound of me. At 3 p.m. you were stable, still our favorite word. At 4 you took the turn. Wait, wait, I am the sentry here. Nothing passes as long as I'm where I am. We go on. Death is a lonely hole, two can leap it. Or else, or else there is nothing. This man is mine. He is an ancient Greek like me. I do all the negotiating while he does battle. We are war and peace in a single bed. We wear the same size shirt. It can't, it can't be. Yet not this. Just let me brush his hair. It's only Tuesday. There's chicken in the fridge from Sunday night. He ate, he slept. Oh, why don't all these kisses rouse you? I won't, won't say it. All I will say is good night. Patting the last few strands in place. You're covered now, my darling. One last graze in the meadow of you. And please let your final dream be a man not quite your size, losing the whole world, but still here combing, combing, singing your secret names till the night's gone. slipped into the mirror. Her hair was getting greasy, but she didn't feel motivated to take a shower. Her teeth were starting to turn yellow, but she was too depressed to brush them. It was Saturday evening, and all she could think to do was crawl into bed and hope she would wake up straight. That was all she wanted, to not be a sinner at the church. Cat closed her eyes and hoped for good dreams. Cat was face to face with the church building. Only now the building had arms, a mouth, and eyes. Honey, you know this bad choice will send you to hell, the church building said in a soft, kind voice, but the words hid hard in Cat's heart. But I'm being careful. Cat stammered. I only kissed once. I dress the right way, date the right way. Why is love destructive? Oh, honey, you are being lied to by the world. The media will twist your heart to make you choose bad things. The church spoke in a sly voice, like a snake wrapping itself around Cat, squeezing her tight. The media? Were there are never gay couples in books, and the only gay people in movies get mugged, beaten, or killed? How's that supposed to make me like the way I am? Cat retorted. Cat, the devil uses emotions to make you think something that you don't actually like. The church stretched out its arm and brushed a hand down Cat's hair. Cat glared at the church feeling uncomfortable at the treatment. Christians will love you by helping you stop your desires. Kat said, so you're supposed to be my Messiah who saves me from these feelings I can't change. This religion that you are talks like you're the one who lived and died for me. But that was Christ. It's like I'm supposed to live for religious rules instead of what he did for me. I never said anything about, I want to believe what I heard three years ago about how Christ loved me and died for me 
and how this faith is caring. But all I'm hearing is about how love has to be a certain gender. Even if I never kiss a girl until my wedding day. Even if I do everything right, it's still not okay with you because I'm in love with a girl. Why is it all about gender? Kat could feel herself bursting with anger. Your faith is slipping because you are rejecting what God has to say. The Christians will make you straight by loving you. That's what real love is. The love you're giving me ain't real! Kat screamed as the tears started running down her cheeks. Love is love regardless of gender, as long as you treat that person with respect. The church taught, but Kat couldn't take it. Stop it! Stop it! Kat screamed. Kat woke up. She was covered in sweat. Hot tears ran down her face. She rolled off the bed. Stuffed animals protected her knees from the impact of the fall. She felt around the stuffed animals and clothes scattered on the floor and crawled to the dresser. In the pitch black room, she couldn't see her Bible, but she could feel its dog-eared pages. Kat clutched her Bible and sobbed, God, I don't know what to do. She cried so hard she could only get a few words out at a time. I feel like this is something special you gave me. The sobs felt like they were tearing her body. God, if this is what you want for me, give me a sign. I can't do this unless you tell me it's okay. Otherwise, please change me. Just help. It felt cheesy to say, but Kat felt this odd peace that stopped her sobs. It was like God was wrapping a blanket around her and shushing her. She was his little girl, and God was telling her she would called to love and respect a girl. As much as Cab wanted to not be true, she knew in her heart it was. Most importantly, she felt God saying he loved her regardless of what others said or who she loved. Cat crawled back to bed and was soon fast asleep. As I walk into the chapel, I wonder what they see, a shining apple of their eye or some faceless degree. Or am I far too garish, far too bold for them to please? When I try to be the way I am, it comes with no great ease, the buzz cut sides that grow so fast no matter what I try. Show some tiny shred of confidence, shy smile may not belie, but do they see through the ruse? Oh, I think they might. I hear them time and time again when they speak of my plight. A wide grin says a honeyed phrase that wants to seem so kind. They say their words under their breath, thinking our minds aligned. The subdued whisper softly said from tilted head held high, If they do linger down that path, the Lord won't hear their cry. They say I'm loud and scorn me, tone down my heart, my love then turn to crowds and roar with screaming shouts to God above, fueling blazing unchecked rage, drowning all that it can find, till burning hatred turns to red, its fire running blind. I feel the pointed gaze, poised so carefully at my back, the brutal beast that lurks behind spring bound to attack, to rend my head from neck and tear the muscle from the bone, till nothing's left at all of me, but blood and string and stone to make that broken body new built up in their design till you will see no more of you and they declare you mine so picturesque and perfect stood tall and still and strong all pearly white and pristine purged of all that they find wrong i've had my fill of holy words of prayers for my soul I've spent my time with books that claim that I will not be whole. I've heard a many damning verse of evil hid within. I've met so many people claiming I am drenched in sin. I'd like to say it's better now, that time has mended all, but there's no respite here where sordid feelings make their crawl. 
I scrub my skin of piercing stare of scathing eye that gleams, of fingers running through my hair till I tear at all my seams, and through the tear it spills away, facade shattered by a life so grave, where want of happy life is lies, where parents' love cannot abide, where jagged nail claws through a palm, where monotone is anger's balm, where they don't try to just see you, where they forget you're human too. And morbidly, I wonder, with brain splattered at my feet, if I were the one who changed, would I be one they'd want to meet? The gray mass sits so heavy, gently slipped back in my head, for changing is no option when they'd sooner have you dead. He or she or Z or they, those words that we've conceived, have turned so many angry heads towards those who want reprieve. But would they listen if I said, I just want to be, that I just want to be alive, that I don't want to leave? Or is even wanting that just a little too naive? I want it soon, that day when I can walk out with no fear, when shadowed threats are far from every person I hold dear. So even now, I hold it tight, keep some sunny spot inside, to wait for when the time is right, when there is nothing left to hide. Medusa. When I saw my face reddened and reduced in his eyes, I turned to stone, or a pillar of salt to watch my village burn. He was the village burning. Maybe that's a different story. Maybe in the end, only the snakes wept. Mermaid. Half fish, half faggot, wishing for legs or the ocean. All to open like a mouth and swallow all of the fallen soldiers and seamen. I saved a woman from her ship. Fire in the water brought her to land. When I got my legs, she split me open anyway. Said I was salt and slick. Said that my stink stank fresh. Werewolf. There are many words for transformation. Metamorphosis. Metaphor. Medication. Go to sleep beside the person you love and wake up next to a dog. Maybe the moon brought it out of them, hound hungry for blood. Maybe it's your fault. Or maybe it was there inside them, howling all along. Bigfoot. My mother wants to know what my man looks like, but he's camera shy. <laughs> he's bipedal humanoid. He's elusive. Which signifies he's ashamed. It's a sham. That kind of man, when it gets serious, disappears. Candy girl. Who fears mirrors? My girl and I stare at our own reflection and make a cute couple. Which means with her arm around me, we look like the kind of faggots you wouldn't want to see dead. But somewhere inside of her, waiting for the right words to be said, is a butcher. Siren. She cries and I lashed to the mast of a ship, steer my body towards the sound, sheets bound around wrists and ankles, tears make grief a lighthouse you wear. When I hear her, a huge wood wheel turns in my stomach and I break open on her jagged coast. Gollum. Take their hair in your hands, their dead skin cells, their discarded undergarments. Take them and make of them a new person. This effigy, their likeness and nothing like them. Breathe life into its clenched carapace. My god, I think I saw it move. Cyclops. It happens at least once to everybody focused on another person's pleasure. Leave the body in the path of oncoming traffic. 
Tithe with two good eyes. At a man's wet altar, spirits rise up like a school of dead fish inside of him. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is queen. Dragon. Patrol or pillage. They exhale and a whole village burns. <laughs> Iron scaled sentry. Guardian of the ivy tower, I wrap my legs around. Everyone thinks they're just a brute. But for me, they lift their breastplate. For me, they welcome the quiver in the arrow's teeth. Vampire. Hepatitis. West Nile. Malaria. HIV. What can't be carried like a burning torch through the blood? What gift ribbons the skin, turns the chest, endowment? Hunger punctures the cistern of a neck. What else do you forget to save each time you're fed? Zombie. What puppets empty meat to the club and compels it to dance? What crystal, what ice, what glass, what speed? What laughter sounds like slowed down and denned flesh? Her body moves as if it's possessed by spirits. She's invincible now. She's already gone. Ghost. Is not a monster, but neither is the conqueror. From the conqueror's mouth, nostalgia is a mausoleum, full of people whose images I've loved more than their skeletons. What is a ghost but what thrives outside the body? What is the heart but a haunting, but a looted museum? Thank you. The first time I ever touched someone else's breasts was like, discovering the seven wonders of the sexual world. The Great Pyramid of God, this shit is awesome. Sometimes people ask me when I knew I was queer. I'm pretty sure I knew before the boob, but after the boob, oh, after the boob. Everything was made clear to me. One boob, two boob, big boob, small boob, to feel them in my hands or mouth, to feel them pressed against my chest. I am a certified boob enthusiast. I love the back arch, the small sigh. Touching these bodies almost makes me believe in God because I don't trust nature to create anything this good. But I also know that most gods punish more than they forgive. And my own body feels more like a guillotine than a gift. Sometimes people ask me when I knew I was transgender. They ask me if I feel like I was born in the wrong body, as if gender is that simple, as if my body is a pair of handcuffs chaining me to housewife, to mother, to woman. I am not trapped in my body. I am trapped in other people's perceptions of my body. My body is something I can only love from afar, a mistress I can only caress in secret. It is death by way of choking, I have no air to even call for help. I tell myself that top surgery is expensive. It's dangerous. The back aches from binding aren't really all that bad. Besides, I love boobs on other people. Why can't I love my own? But when I tell people my name, they still use the wrong one. I say, not girl, and they give me back woman, lady, she. I say, not woman. And they say, <laughs> silly girl, it is not up to you to decide. And I don't want to hate my body for this. My body is not wrong. The way people talk about my body is wrong. But my body is the only thing I can change. My best friend asked me why I want top surgery. A voluntary double mastectomy. He asked me why I would want to cut off a perfectly healthy body part. I tell him, it is not healthy to feel unsafe in my body. This chest feels like a misplaced sex organ. If you had a penis growing from your elbow, you'd probably want to cut it off. Everyone would come up to you and talk to you about your elbow penis. They would never let you be anything more than your body. I am more than my body. But these days, I can only love my chest like a good cry. When my friend says I am a burial ground, my life becomes a constant funeral, and I can't be happy with all these ghosts living inside of me. So stop calling me diseased. Stop 
looking at my body and chaining me to whoever you think it makes me. I was not born in the wrong body. I was born into a world who does not know what my body means. There once was a girl who wasn't a girl, but who wasn't a boy either, and she didn't know what that made her, but she knew what everyone said. Broken. Broken. Our language is broken, or maybe not broken, but it still needs to be fixed. There need to be words for that little girl who isn't a girl, who isn't a boy, who isn't a he or a she, a brother or a sister, a father or a mother. That child deserves to have words. Just like everyone else. Words to describe existence and relation. Real words that people use without looking askance or like they're just humoring that broken child. Not, not hard words. Not words like sibling or parent. Not words that sound as if they come from a clinic, a, lab, a laboratory. That child needs words. Words have power. And without words, how will that child have power? Power to stand up to the bullies. Power to claim a right to exist, a right to live. Power to demand a bathroom, a bedroom, a place to stand. Boys to the left, girls to the right. And the child just freezes in the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please follow me. And the child is left behind. The child looks out at the world, at all the either-ors. Day, night, black, white, hot, cold, tall, short, but what about the other? The none of the above. What about the dawn, the gray? Man, woman. What about me? 525,600 minutes. 525,000 moments so dear. 525,600 minutes. How do you measure, measure a year? In daylights, in sunsets. In midnights, in cups of coffee. In inches, in miles, in laughter, in strife. In 525,600 minutes. How do you measure a year in the life? How about, about love? 525,600 minutes. 525,000 journeys to plan. 525,600 minutes. How do you measure the life of a woman or a man? In truths that she learned. Or in times that he cried in bridges he burned or the way that she died it's time now to sing out though the story never ends let's, let's celebrate. celebrate remember a year in the life of friends remember, remember the, love. the love oh you've got to you got to remember the love Remember, Remember the love. love. You know that life is a gift from up above. Remember, Remember the love. love. Share love, give love, spread love. Measure in love. Measure, measure your life in love. Seasons, Seasons of love. love. Seasons, Seasons of love. love. Measure your life in the love.